Now, the B natural E relationship was a consonant perfect fourth. This brilliant move changed history. Philosophically and musically, what he did was to create what he termed harmonia, unity fitting together within a scale. The understanding of harmonia would teach humankind immutable laws and appeal to the higher rational intellect. It balanced the limitless and the limited, heaven and earth. Adding the octave implied more than just a resounding of the primary tone at a higher level. The octave is a completion of the scale and of all the intervals therein. The 20th century philosopher Rudolf Steiner, in teaching about the interval, stated that the feeling for the octave brings us to find our own self on a higher level. In his perception, the true experience of the octave will become a new form of proving the existence of God. So Pythagoras' experiment altered music for all time, made possible the Greek scale systems, which later evolved into the medieval modal scales and our modern major and minor scales, established the basis for all future music theory work, and gave us an interval for the future. Flora Levin's commentary on Nicomachus' manual surmises, As a musical act, adding the octave was sublimely simple. As a mathematical production, however, it was incalculably profound. Through the discovery of musical laws and that there is an order behind musical sounds, Pythagoras and his followers connected to the thought that the same order and relationship is found in nature and the universe. Music was number, and the cosmos was music. Pythagoras, as scientist and initiate, experienced this revelation in the deepest sense of the word. Suddenly, a doorway was opened into a mystical understanding of the universe. The Pythagoreans realized that this mathematical order, or hidden pattern, which was the basis of musical sounds, lay behind everything in nature and the cosmos. This was the first time that such a conscious connection had been established. Pythagoras' discovery of musical ratios and overtones provided him with the basis for his mathematical work. His vision of intervals as mathematical ideals, symbolizing universal harmony or divine substance, moved the cosmos from a poetic, visual phenomenon to a scientific conception that spawned centuries of further development in mathematics, music, astronomy, and cosmogony. A legend reported by Boethius, who lived from 480 to 524 Common Era, states that Pythagoras, upon hearing of a youth who had been jilted by his lover and was preparing to set her house on fire, determined that the youth was under the influence of a certain musical mode or scale. By suggesting that he change his tune and employ a melody based on an alternate scale, Pythagoras was able to restore the youth to a state of calmness. Whether this story is true or not, Pythagoras was one of the first musicians to recognize the therapeutic power of music. His work with the mathematical properties and ratios of musical intervals convinced him that the music of the human organism would respond in various ways to these relationships. For the Pythagoreans, both music and the soul share a basis in number. The Greek modes used at that time were distinguished primarily by their intervallic structures. Each was thought to have a positive or negative effect on the human psyche. Consequently, certain rhythms, scales, and songs were used to heal the body and soothe the passions. The Pythagoreans were said to have musical exercises for sleeping and waking and to stimulate certain moods for work and relaxation. Later, Plato, about 427 to 347 before the Common Era, who was strongly influenced by the Pythagorean doctrine of universal number, would take up this concept and make it into a science, prescribing musical modes for warriors, women, and various illnesses and passions.
Plato introduced Pythagoras' vision of a musical cosmos into the mainstream, which would result in it becoming a standard in the Greek worldview, and eventually in that of the entire civilization of Western thought. Pythagorean principles are the basis of much of musical and mathematical study, and the strength and depth of his discoveries changed the way the world perceived itself, even up to our times. However, his influence goes beyond the world of science and mathematics. It penetrates into the mystical side of number and music. A principal teaching of the Pythagorean school was that God is universal harmony, perceived through number. Albert von Timas, in the 19th century, used Pythagoras' concepts to create a Pythagorean table, which mathematically explains the effect of music on the universe and on the human being. Working from an ancient treatise, von Timas and his colleagues believed that they had come upon the fundamental diagram of the lost science of harmonics, hinted at by Plato, as the culmination of all learning but never revealed publicly. The table projects the universe. Although mathematically complex, it can be simplified by stating that each rational fraction and integer is arrived at as an intersection of an overtone and an undertone row. A tone is projected as a created being, each being manifesting number and note. All beings have the same root. The original tone is one to one equals God. If we take the table's calculations beyond its boundaries, we arrive at zero to zero, the point which sounds no tone, the unmanifest, the absolute, mind, and silence. Pythagoras' theorems, thus projected, point toward the future of science as it continues to ask questions of the universe. Pythagoras' experience as an initiate, scientist, musician, and mystic made him singularly qualified to explore the mysteries of the universe through music and number. As Guy Murky, writing on the music of the spheres, concludes, Nature has a beautiful simplicity of order, and the intuitions of Pythagoras are proving substantially justified. <laughs>